Uh, this morning I have a special presentation I want to share with you and the public. I want to warn you in advance, the DVD you're about to see is exceptionally graphic. In all probability, it's going to make some of us uncomfortable, and it should. I want to make it very clear, we did not produce this DVD. It was produced by a young man who is watching us today over the Internet. His name is Reginald Bullock, and he's watching us from Tennessee. The DVD speaks for itself, but let me set it up for you. But did you know that black teenagers are killing each other in rising numbers? <clears throat> And it is part of a troubling trend that is plaguing our communities and this nation. Our young men are disappearing either because they are being killed or because they are headed to prison for killing each other. Now, those statistics don't frighten you. And I want you to take a very sobering look at this DBBD because, as I have been saying, you have to change your heart in order to change our heads. And, Madam President, would you please... To this is about an 18-minute DVD, and I know our attention span, in many cases, uh, people like to move around. But please, I want you to please watch this DVD and give it your full attention. So Robert Kennedy, when he was Attorney General, said that he could imagine the possibility of a Negro president in the United States within perhaps 40 years. Do you think this is at all realistic? I am very optimistic uh, about the future. Uh, frankly, I have seen certain changes in the United States over the last two years that surprised me. So on the basis of this, I think we may be able to get a Negro president in less than 40 years. I would think uh, that this could come in 25 years or less. Bombs fell on our harbor and tyranny threatened the world. She was there to witness a generation rise to greatness and a democracy was saved. She was there for the buses in Montgomery, the hoses in Birmingham, a bridge in Selma, and a preacher from Atlanta who told the people that we shall overcome. Yes, we can. A man touched down on the moon. A wall came down in Berlin. A world was connected by our own science and imagination. Sir, sir, master of darkness, I, I, I came to apologize. I, I know that you gave me control over the African Americans on Earth, but, but I've messed up, sir, because one of them has just been elected president of the United States, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. Quit crying, you fool. You must have forgotten what I have done to the African-American throughout the history of time. But, but Master of Darkness, he, he, he's Harvard educated, he's a smart man, he's a good man, he loves his wife, he, he's almost like he's perfect, and, 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 and he's a Christian. It's, it's going to be really hard to stop him, sir. <laughs> there are certainly ways to stop him. Let me give you the history of what I've done to the African-American. I always knew that I needed America to be a powerful nation that would control the world. But in order to do this, I needed Africans to help accelerate the process. Having slaves in America would allow the United States a 300-year head start on all other nations, allowing them to become one of the most powerful in the world. What, what, why did you pick African slaves, sir? Africans were very strong people. They were one of God's first creations. I needed their strength, I needed their wisdom, I needed all of their abilities so that I could help the Americas become powerful. How did you get them to do it? We beat them, we whipped them, we did everything we could do to destroy who they were. We even sold their children, broke up their families. They don't even know if they're related or not, even to this day. <laughs>
But one of the biggest things that we did to them was we destroyed their spirit. And one of the ways we destroyed their spirit was to change their names. You see, Africans were very proud of who they were, what tribe they came from, and pronunciation of their name. But you see, we changed their name. We made their captors give them new names. What's your name? Kunta. Kunta Kinte. I want to hear you say your name. Your name is Toby. What's your name? Kunta. What's your name? Toby. Hi. Say it again. Say it louder so they all can hear you. What's your name? Toby. My name is Toby. Hi. That's a good nigger. So, so Grandmaster, that broke the spirit of the African American? No, not immediately. Because you see, the African American always had a connection to his God. His God has always been in his corner. And when he listened to his God, he's always seemed to pull out of situations. But I'm always there to correct this. You see, African Americans, once their names were changed, they then became proud of their new names. They went from Kunta Kente to Bill Jones, Toby Smith, and even names like Robert Johnson. And even when I called them Robert Johnson, it didn't seem to stop them. They continued to achieve success at every level, and this was very frustrating to me and my dark powers. So I thought my plan failed, but I came up with a new plan, and my new plan was to call them all niggers. That's right. I don't care if you were Kunta Kente, I don't care if your new name is Robert Johnson, you are a nigger, and I want the rest of the world to look at you as a nigger. You see, a nigger is someone that is nothing, that is below everyone else on the planet. You are close to being a dog. So, so Master Darkness, once you call them niggers, they, they just accepted it? No, you fool. They did not accept it right away. It took a while. You see, once again, they went back to their god and that God carried them through the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and we call them niggers. We put ropes around their necks and we lynched them and we hung them from the highest trees we could find. Let their bodies swing in the night. We burned their homes. We created groups called the Ku Klux Klan that absolutely terrified all living African Americans. Once again, they withstood the pressure of time by praying to their God, to their Jesus. Well, Grandmaster, what did you do then? I forced evil's hand. I told evil to make it so that African Americans couldn't vote. I made it so that African Americans could not sit in the front of a bus. I made it so that African Americans couldn't get a proper education. I did everything I could do, but they continued to pray and pray and pray until one day, Oh, God heard them, and he gave them heroes, people of substance. He gave them Dr. Martin Luther King. He gave them Rosa Parks. He gave them Malcolm X. He gave them all of these freedom fighters, and they fought and they prayed, and it was one of my darkest days. Well, how, how did you deal with their heroes, Grandmaster of Darkness? Very easy. I murdered them. One by one, I killed King. I have a dream today! Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis, Tennessee. I killed X. 
What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. I killed Medgar Evers. I killed a little boy, Emmett Till. I killed four girls in an Alabama church. I killed all of them. So, so Grandmaster, is this the direction we should go with their new president? No, you fool. You see, we don't have to kill them anymore. African Americans have been beaten down for so long, they simply kill each other. Let me explain it to you, my son. You see, African Americans in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s would fight, would be hung, would fight to the ground if they were called nigger. But you see, now I've got them affectionately calling each other nigger. They call their husbands nigger. They call their wives nigger. They call their little children, get over here, you little nigger. They love calling each other nigger, and they think it's cute. I've got their spirits broken, and I have young African Americans embracing the word nigger. They all think they are niggers, and they say it with a smile on their face, even though their grandmothers and grandfathers were killed for the word, but they have said it in name and music, and people call it art form. I call it my nigger control. I've got them thinking that entertainment, basketball, rhymes, these are more important than coming to school on time. They think that's all they can do. So you see, they never focus on education. And the sad part is, when you see a young black child in school that's trying to strive hard, the rest of the black kids make fun of him. They call him a white boy. Isn't that a masterful, wonderful mind trick that I play with them? But listen to me, my son. There's even more mind tricks. They think that thug life is wonderful. They think that thug life is keeping it real. And they think jail life is funny. Oh, we've done a job on the African American. But let me tell you the worst thing that we've done to the African American. Ooh, this is getting good, Grandmaster Darkness. Tell me more, tell me more. I am so powerful that now I have everyone afraid of African American males. No matter how old they are, people are afraid of them. They're clutching their pocketbooks. And do you know why? African American men are really perpetuating the fear that I've placed in people's hearts. They're selling drugs to each other. They're selling drugs to children. They're recruiting their own children to sell drugs. And do you know what the consolation prize is? get to go to prison and hang out with all of your boys for the next 5, 10, 20 years. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll get a bullet in your brain and be able to leave this earth early. That is the hopelessness that I have given young African-American boys and African-American girls. I have turned them into hoochies. That's what they're called. Oh yes, in their music. Oh, it's a beautiful day to destroy African-American spirit because they don't know they were the kings and queens of the earth and they cry when they see Barack Obama but they smile when they're cold. They don't know. Oh, I've got a plan for them. Oh, what's the plan? What's the plan? Oh, my plan is simple and sweet. Just keep them uninformed. You see, the slave masters from way back in the day, they knew there was a secret behind keeping African slaves to not have any type of education. Well, that's the same thing I'm doing. But we don't have to have laws now. They don't show up at school. They don't care about grades. All they care about is shiny hubcaps. They care about shiny things on their hands. You see, all you have to do is give young African-American youth just shiny things. They're like babies. Don't you worry about Barack Obama because they will cry. They will feel happy. But once the joy and the happiness has subsided, they will go back to selling drugs. They will go back to shooting each other. They will go back to infecting each other with diseases over and over again. They will go back to hiding away from their God. Their new God is money and bling and nothing else matters. And as a matter of fact, Barack Obama in four years will be a laughing joke because people will say, you had a black president and look at you, your ghettos have increased, your hopelessness has increased, 
Your teen pregnancy has increased. Your godlessness has increased. Oh no, Grandmaster. I left my intergalactic cell phone on. Everything we've been talking about is being transmitted back to Earth. Don't worry, my son. African Americans are too distracted to know that it is us. They will blame white people. They will blame the police in their neighborhoods. They will blame their neighborhood. They will blame their father for not being there. They will blame their mother for being an alcoholic. They will blame their lack of money. They will blame everything around them except taking personal responsibility and realizing that I am the evil force behind all of their troubles. Even if they were to hear this message, they wouldn't believe it. They would blame someone else. <laughs> Depression across the land. She saw a nation conquer fear itself with a new deal, new jobs, a new sense of common purpose. Yes, we can. Alone in a room, it's just me and you. I feel so lost, cause I don't know what I'm going When the bombs fell on our harbor, now and tyranny threatened the world. She was there to witness a generation rise to greatness and a democracy was saved. Yes, we can. I'm so afraid, afraid of disappointing you. So I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially this day when my life. So cloudy, guide me until I'm sure I open up my heart. I have a dream. The hoses in Birmingham, a bridge in Selma, and a preacher from Atlanta who told the people that we shall overcome. Yes, we can. will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. A man touched down on the moon. A wall came down in Berlin. A world was connected by our own science and imagination. And this year, in this election, she touched her finger to a screen and cast her vote. Because after 106 years in America, through the best of times and the darkest of hours. She knows how America can change. Yes, we can. I have a dream. What's your name? Gunter. may be able to get a Negro president in less than 40 years. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. America, we have come so far. We have seen so much. Sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood? I just want to do God's will. Out of many, we are one. 
that while we breathe, we hope, and where we are met with cynicism and doubt, and those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. I still have a dream.